Welcome back everyone, it's a tier 6 game on Pearl River Standard Mode. I am in my SU-85B because I am grinding for some high tier Soviet tank destroyers. I am joined by uh, two of my clanmates for this battle, Joker and Mustang. You probably remember Mustang from some of my previous videos, he's now joined the wolf pack with me. And we've ended up in what can be nicely described as very unfavorable fighting circumstances. It's a very enclosed map, which while it has lots of concealment, does not have a lot of long-range shooting locations. For my SU, Joker's the Matilda, so he's a small, slow, uh, perhaps not as well armed as he'd like target driving around. And Port Mustang's in a Covenanter, which is even worse off here than, than probably the rest of us, since it has teasonal speed and an okay gun and no armor. But hey, you know, it's it's that's the life of Tier 4 in a very Tier 6 match. Oh my gosh, KV-85, M6, T-150, VK-30... O1D, Hellcat, Hellcats, and SU-100Y, all tier 6. It's it's a pretty scary match. So Joker and I decide we'll play base defense. Uh, Mustang goes off to see if he can do something useful in his Covenanter. Uh, we watch our team move forward to engage. So we can figure out how best to deal with enemies uh, as they come at us, like who's, who's where. So Mustang just made contact with the Panzer 3-4. He's trying to help out down there. And we can see there's an M6 and a KV-1 pushing the north. And there's a T-150, a VK-3001D, and a T-50 in the middle. So we're guessing the middle's going to go first. But then we see that there might be a problem up north. So I go, okay, I'm going to reposition my SU-85B here. So I can cover either one of those directions. And ooh, the north suddenly... It's our big red rash of vehicles. And you can see that the tanks up there are just getting blasted apart in a hurry. So I come up here with this Hellcat and I make sure I'm at least 15, uh, 15 meters back, 15 feet back from each of these bushes. I just wonder why I may have surprised and annihilate poor Mustang before he can do much. And the northern flank falls. I line up my gun and then watch the mini map. I'm looking, hoping that SU 85 will just round the corner here and I can blow him up. But then I realize that he looks like he and the M6 are actually going up the middle. And suddenly a, t a wild T-150 appears. Once again, make sure there's plenty of thick bush between me and him. Start trying to abuse this tank's stealth. Go for the track, try and track him there. He gets up two hit points. Oh, track hit. Aim a little more carefully. Boom! Get the kill shot in a tier 6 vehicle. Awesome. Spot the SU-85. Can't quite get the gun on him. Reorient, re-aim, start firing. Second shot goes in. SU-85 is down for my second kill. Move a little bit over here to try and get shots on the KV-1 and the M6. Joker is hitting the M6. Trying to get a shot on the KV-1. Don't see it. Go for the shot in the M6. Bounces off. Annoying. At this point, it's all about platoon work. SU-85 actually, particularly with Binox and Camonet, is a really good spotter because it can hide really well. It has a decent view rate. So I move down here, vanish into these bushes, and then hold still. Joker, in his Matilda, despite the relative puniness of his little gun, uh, is actually got really high penetration. So what we're going to do is, anyone comes around the corner, hopefully he'll be able to whittle them down before they overrun my position and reveal my SU-85. There's a little while here while we just kind of wait nervously, and then suddenly, KV-1 comes. And I just hold my fire, don't even point my gun at him. And at first, Joker's just bouncing off, but then he finds the range. And the KV-1 begins losing health. Now, KV-1 right now is really perplexed. He's there like, what's hitting me and why can't I see it? And of course, the reason is, is that Joker's outside his view range, and he's inside of mine. So we're just going to sit here and just pull, carefully wait, get our platoon work going, as Joker just riddles the KV-1 with little holes. KV-1 finally tries to take, decides to take some cover against this invisible opponent and vanishes because he's just behind that rock where I can't quite see him. But that's okay. If he comes behind it, I'll respot him. Hmm, center's not looking so good. I hope we're able to deal with him sooner. We're going to have to deal with both the KV-85 and the KV-1 and the M6 all at once, which could be bad. Oh, there's the KV-1. He's come back out. No, he's, he's kind of close. If I take a shot, he might kill me, but that's okay. Joker still has the range and starts whittling him away again. Two more shots. Come on, Joker, you got him. One more. Boom, just in the nick of time, because here comes the KV-85. 
Can't stay disengaged for this one. Looks, Joker starts laying into him almost immediately as I back away to regain concealment. Once I know I've got it. Joker and I just start going in, laying into him. Yep, I'm using gold. I'm not proud. I'm a tier 4 to tier 6 game. And set him on fire. Boom. Burns to death. Awesome. Unfortunately, just as this is going on, the Chaffee and the Leopard, who have managed to break through the south, find themselves up against the VK 3001D. Our Top Gun Chaffee, unfortunately, is not going to be able to pull this one off and is taken out. A few months later, the VK takes out the Leopard as well. Suddenly, the situation is very interesting. Joker and I are both at full health, but we're Tier 4 tanks. Both the enemy tanks are damaged. There's an M6 and a VK 301D. We haven't seen that M6 in a long time. And Joker says, I wonder how we're going to handle this. And I say, we need to go and meet that VK head on and hope that light tanks did enough damage to him that we can just kill him outright. So we turn and we start heading south. There's, of course, one very slight flaw in this plan. The Matilda is incredibly slow. Both the enemy tanks are way faster than he is. As a matter of fact, I suspect the VK is even faster than my vehicle. We are extremely outclassed in terms of um, maneuverability around here. But despite this, I really do. Part of me really feels the best bet is to go and try and meet the enemy, catch them where they're not expecting us, preferably one at a time, so we can just work them over and kill them before they can kill us. Now, of course, I'm running the Joker kind of bad, so I end up stopping here to hide a little bit and wait for him to catch up. And yeah, I don't have the Top Gun on this thing yet. I'm still using, I think it's the ZIS-6, uh, which is the uh, high penetration, high rate of fire, 57mm uh, you, you got on the uh, as the Top Gun on the SU-76. Uh, and on this tank, it's actually still very, very nasty because of its incredibly high rate of fire. Decent, and good accuracy, particularly for a Russian gun, and uh, actually more decent uh, penetration. So at this point, Mustang suddenly says, hey, you should pop up there and see if there's anything out there. This is another moment for platooning is good. I, oh, that's a great idea. I'll come up here, because I know that even if I have to go back down around and do a U-turn, I will still catch up with Joker in no time. And that reveals something very interesting. There's both enemy tanks. They're moving up on this position, and now we know they're coming. And I'm able to get in the first good ambush shot on the weaker VK-3001D. Fall back. Come back forward. Say, Joker, I'm setting this guy up for you. Boom, make him nice low health. Take a nasty hit from the M6. Can't do that again. But that's okay. Joker says, I'm going for him. I'm going to take the hit. And I say, excellent. Joker takes the hit. Puts some damage in. And then I go to work on him. While he's reloading, we each get enough shots in that then I'm able to finish him off before he can reload and kill me. Whew. That was a very close match, but I think it wonderfully demonstrates the power of platooning. Our our two our little our little group, even Mustang was long dead, um, just by saying, "Hey, recon," he played a role and allowed us to spot those guys first, which allowed us to get the first damaging shot in, uh, and then allowed us to set up uh, for the kill first on the VK before he could do too much damage, so that then we could try and DPM down the uh, the M6. And it just, we just barely made it. Two tier fours taking on two tier sixes. Um, and also got me another first. There I got myself a Hallinan's Medal, which is one you get for destroying at least, I think it's at least two or maybe at least three uh, enemy tanks who are two or more, who are two or more here, tiers higher than you are um, while driving a tank destroyer. So this was actually a really awesome match for me. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed that. Let's go on to the post-game stats. So here's the post-game stats for that match you just watched. First class in the SU-85, which makes me wonder what the heck people were actually doing in this vehicle, that that was only a first class uh, medal. A whole bunch of these little micro medals. Uh, but the big one is, of course, the Hallinan's medal over there. It's a picture of its lovely Stug. And you can see my, my list of victims and see that actually I only I killed everything I killed was higher tier. Got the kill shot in the SU-85, was tier five, uh, and got kill shots on a T-150 at tier six, uh, the M6 at tier six, and the KV-85 uh, also at tier six, along with two hits into another tier six, the VK-3001D, along with spotting a ton of damage on that KV-1 uh, for 
uh, Joker. So I thought it was pretty good. Uh, moving on to the next screen right here, you can see, despite how awesome that match was for me, the two light tanks did do better. They um, they actually came out with uh, 1,200 damage and 1,700 damage, respectively, uh, earning them the top two spots, deservedly so. But as the lone survivor, I sort of feel like getting the Hallandons medal, I kind of feel like, you know, we did, did good uh, for my team. Uh, commiserations for the KV-85 that we took out right there in the middle. You can see 2,000 damage. He was having a, a great monster match uh, before he actually ran in front of, to his amazement, two Tier 4s that did not understand the concept of giving up. M6, almost as good a match. Matter of fact, he had a better match than most people on our team with 1,800 damage and still ends up being shot to death by Tier 4s. The VK was one of the last guys. He only had 500 damage. I'm actually surprised he got so little damage considering how uh, how long he lasted. But he um, he did a good thing for his team by picking off the Chaffee and the Leopard to keep them from just capping out. I was also very impressed that he and the M6 were smart enough to come in together at the end to make sure they could try and overwhelm our little Tier 4s. Yeah, it's uh, tough luck for them. That just didn't quite work out. So on to the last screen. Uh, 20 shots fired, a 19 hits, a very respectable 95% hit rate. Uh, 14 penetrations, give you an idea of how powerful this gun is. 1,000 damage, uh, most of it from less than 300 meters, which considering how often I was shooting, uh, might give you an idea of just how ridiculous this little tank destroyer is. It actually is a very, very high stealth level. Only took one hit, it penned, it hurt a lot. <laughs> I only had 28 health left at the end of the game. Uh, damage five vehicles, destroyed four, 346 damage. Uh, all off that KV-1, uh, thanks to uh, Joker's excellent shooting, um, and even managed to drive away with a decent profit. Though part of that is because I pre-buy a lot of um, APCR ammunition um, whenever there's sales. So I bet I did not actually make 19,000 credits on that battle. I bet I lost a lot of cash. Uh, just doesn't look that way because of my pre-buy, and came off also with 1,200 and 72 more experience as I grind my way towards the top 85 millimeter gun on this tank. Anyway. I hope you all enjoyed that match. Good game and good night.